South Asian migrants living in the West, particularly Pakistanis, try to bring up their children according to Eastern values, regardless of the conflicts this produces. Parents are particularly keen for their children to marry within their own community. Sometimes they use force to achieve this. The British Foreign and Commonwealth Office's Community Liaison Unit, CLU, deals with about 250 cases of forced marriage a year. According to some estimates, over a thousand such marriages take place in Britain every year. Fazia Samad, a case worker at the CLU, emphasizes the difference between a forced and an arranged marriage. Mother-in-law always saw that there is a compatibility between the girl and the boy. In forced marriages, it is not happening. 18 से बहुत कम निकाल के स्कूल से जबरदस्ती उनकी शादी की जा रही है। According to various surveys, some 70% of the Bangladeshis and Pakistanis based in the UK marry within their own communities. This becomes an issue if their consent is not involved. 1999 में एक पार्लियामेंट्री डिबेट हुई थी फोर्स मैरिज के ऊपर। रीजन वो उस डिबेट का ये था कि एक लड़की जिसकी जबरदस्ती शादी की गई थी, वो अपने मियां को छोड़के और वापस आ गई। उसका बॉयफ्रेंड था जिससे वो पहले ही शादी करना चाहती थी। आई थिंक वो प्रेग्नेंट भी होगी और जब उसके मां को पता चला तो वो उसकी Several other cases of forced marriage came to public knowledge around this time. A resulting debate in the British Parliament led to several recommendations. These included the formation of the CLU at the Foreign and Commonwealth Office. Police and social services workers were instructed to view forced marriage not as an internal matter limited to minority communities, but as a human rights issue and a crime. Detective Sergeant Jim Blair of the Scotland Yard deals with domestic violence, ethnic crimes and forced marriage issues. I'm from Malakuma and we might have to work with the Indian police in Delhi and Punjab around domestic violence and around crime investigation, which was linked into forced marriage and honour crimes. And that, that, that was very, very productive. And what we'd hope to do is, that, is to get to Pakistan and to set up the same sort of relationships and hopefully do joint training. From January to June this year, the British High Commission in Islamabad dealt with 44 cases of forced marriage. Last year, they dealt with 115 such cases. Officers at this commission have been working on forced marriages in a specialized way since the year 2000. They note a 15 to 20 percent increase in the number of cases reported to them annually. When people come to us for assistance or we're able to, to get to them, what they need is, is security. Often they've been in very difficult situations where they've suffered emotional and sometimes physical abuse. So what we can provide them with is a safe environment or an opportunity in which they can choose what they want to do with their future. The Foreign Office's attempts to raise awareness on this issue include two films commissioned by the CLU. Narina's story is based on an interview with a girl who escaped a forced marriage along with her two sisters. Their parents had come to the UK from Pakistan and Narina and her sisters grew up in Bolton. They visited Pakistan as children but agreed to go again only on condition that they would not be forced into marriage. Their mother swore on the Quran that this would not happen. But when they reached their village in Gujarat, they were told they could not leave unless they agreed to marry relatives. Somehow they escaped and made their way to Lahore, where they contacted the British Honorary Consul through the internet. He sent them to the British High Commission in Islamabad, from where they were flown back to England. Yeah, I, I did thinking about killing myself and I started harming myself. Um, but I got over it because, I got over it because it was against my religion and I kept that inside me. Now we have managed to get housed. We've got our own two bedroom flat and we're putting furniture in it, we're setting it up and planning for the future. I always wished for freedom and it seemed impossible that I would get freedom. I, and 
that impossible feeling, it just vanished as soon as I developed that courage. The other film includes the story of a Bangladeshi couple. Sufyan Mia and Shipa wanted to get married, but her parents refused to allow this. They took her to Bangladesh, where they tried to pressurize her to marry according to their wishes. Sufyan followed her to Dhaka and filed a habeas corpus petition in court. Newspapers picked up the story and Shipa's parents were forced to allow her to go with Sufyan, but they still refused to meet her. When a young person goes through a forced marriage, it does not affect just maybe one person or two people that are involved. It involves a lot of people, immediate family, friends, sisters, brothers, and it breaks up a lot of, a lot of families and a lot of, a lot of hurt goes in and a lot of trauma, especially the individual that's going through it. One of the most prominent women's rights organisations in Britain is South Hall Black Sisters, which has been working in London's South Hall area since 1982. SBS receives between two to 3,000 complaints a year, of which about 250 are related to forced marriage. When someone is taken out of the country in such cases, cooperation between Britain and the other country is crucial. Hanana Siddiqui has been working with SBS for the last 16 years. She says forced marriage has always been an issue, but people have only recently begun speaking about it. There was a recent case, someone called Neela Aziz, who actually did speak up uh, in court to say that she wanted to return home and that she was being held against her will. But in that case, there was an opportunity for people to talk to her in advance before she had to speak up in court, and that's really, really important. I think the other thing, important thing in that case was that the judge was very liberal, and he actually did want to do something about this. SBS organized a seminar in London with the Kurd Refugee Women's Association and the Middle East Center for Women's Studies. Iraqi Kurd Hershu Abdullah says that since 1991, some 8,000 women have been killed in the name of honor in the Kurd area. Actually, it, uh, itself, forced marriage violence, actually, and sometimes if she refused, it ended by killing. Ali Yasin, a Sudanese political refugee in London, says that forced marriages often take place in Muslim countries. This is giving a bad name to Islam, which does not allow forced marriage. It happens in other, in other countries and unfortunately in the name of Islam. Several scholars and religious leaders are working to dispel such misperceptions. They include Rashid Ahmad Qasim, the Imam of the Croydon Mosque in London. حضور صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی سیرت اور احادیث جو ہے اس بات پر گواہ ہیں کہ اسلام میں فورس میریجز کا کوئی کانسپٹ نہیں ہے اپنے والدین جو زبردستی کرتے ہیں مینلی وہ یہ وجہ دیتے ہیں کہ ہم نے زبان دے رکھی ہے ہمارا سب سے زیادہ ٹائم اگر کسی مسئلے پر جاتا ہے تو وہ یہ جبری شادی ہیں یہ کہیے کہ ایک پوری ٹیم ایک کیس کے پیچھے ففٹی سکسٹی آورز پچاس ساٹھ گھنٹے جو ہے اس کے اوپر سرو کرتی ہے اور پھر ہمیں بالآخر مجبور ہو کر کے یہ فیصلہ کرنا پڑتا ہے کہ وہ شادی کی کوئی ویلیو نہیں ہے جبری شادی میں کمیونٹی پہ خاندان پہ اور پوری فیملی پہ بہت اثر پڑتا ہے اسلام میں بھی اس بات کی پرمیشن ہے کہ لڑکے اور لڑکی دونوں سے باہمی رضا مندی دی جائے ہمارا اسلام یہ اجازت دیتا ہے کہ لڑکا لڑکی اپنی پسند کی شادی کرے Dr. Lynn Welchman, an expert on the Middle East and on Islamic laws, notes that this tradition is found in countries with tribal customs that deny women's rights. Internationally, of course, you have a lot of attention to the issue in Pakistan, and probably the country that's had most attention internationally has been Jordan. In this case, in Britain, there are some of the things that have been taken to them, which are the ones that want to call their husband and daughter to Britain. In May 2003, Britain introduced a law according to which any Briton under 18 can no longer sponsor a husband or wife. But since the minimum age of consent for marriage within the country is 16, rights groups see this as a human rights violation and further immigration control measure. London-based Bangladeshi lawyer Sarah Hussain points out that at the moment there isn't enough data on forced marriages within the country. Until we know that and until we see the kind of responses that are happening to effectively prevent forced marriages within Britain, I don't understand why all the, the, the focus should now be on preventing you know, the two and a half people who are coming in from abroad in these cases. 
The practice of forced marriage may be declining worldwide, but as long as there are people who continue to justify it on religious or traditional grounds, this is not an issue that is going to go away. Bina Sarwar, Geo, London.